since he collaborated with Indonesian entrepreneurs, donating 5,000 oxygen generators. Volunteers in Daling Zichi Hospital bring delicious food to patients living in dedicated wards. Welcome to Diet Headlines, I'm Hu Chao, glad to have you with us. Due to the pandemic, Zichi Indonesia tried every means to assist the medical capacity of hospitals in various provinces. Recently, in combination with entrepreneurs, 5,000 oxygen generators were donated to hospitals in need. A military plane landed in Medan delivering 100 oxygen concentrators. The pandemic in Indonesia continues to peak. Zichi volunteers worked with local business people to raise material support for frontline medical care workers. The pandemic in Indonesia is now very severe. The whole country, including our hospitals in North Sumatra, has a shortage of oxygen generators. I hope this batch of supplies can provide relief. Since the outbreak of the pandemic last year, Zichi Indonesia has been assisting the government in combating the spread of COVID in various ways. This time it purchased 5,000 oxygen generators and part of this supply was donated to North Sumatra. Zigi's donations of materials is not the first since the outbreak of the pandemic last year. Zigi volunteers have always found various methods to help us fight the pandemic. I look forward to continued cooperation of this type. This protective net of love and compassion to fight the pandemic includes a Taiwanese manufacturer of ultraviolet disinfection robots who donated these products to Zigi Hospital in Indonesia hoping to help slow the spread of the pandemic. Thank you for giving me this loving opportunity to send my company's disinfection robot to your hospital. Especially you are just open to receive the COVID patient. Um, for this uneasy task, we truly hope we can be of a little help. This UV disinfection robot is very suitable for use in hospitals especially the Pandemic Prevention Center, which opened in June. It can thoroughly disinfect the environment and medical equipment and reduce the risk of infection for medical staff. This international donation has helped Indonesia's medical network. It is also a good example of companies joining hands with charitable organizations to promote social welfare. In Malaysia, the pandemic situation is still serious and there are many patients in hospitals. As a result, the hospitals are facing shortage of beds. Siji Johar Baru has provided a total of 90 jinxes folding beds, hoping to help the hospital. Volunteers carefully take out jinxes folding beds from the storage. These folding beds have played an important role during the pandemic period. In fact, Siji Johar Baru has provided jinxes folding beds to hospitals for more than once. This proves that our pandemic situation is still very serious and supplies are still lacking. In the past, Ziji has provided jeans to folding beds to hospitals to be used as quarantine beds. However, as there are more confirmed cases, folding beds have become temporary beds for patients in hospitals. This is the first time I am seeing beds like these. Its design is very attractive and it can be easily assembled. It's also very light. I want to express my gratitude because these beds are very helpful for patients, especially COVID-19 patients in the ER. Besides lending jeans to the folding beds, Siji has also donated 20 oxygen flow meters and 4,095 masks. We have given out double-headed oxygen flow meters and masks. Their machines on the wall can only provide oxygen to one patient. If they are two heads, then two patients can share the equipment. City volunteers have shown their support for the frontline medical workers so they can safeguard more patients. In Malaysia, covert confirmed cases have been on the rise. City volunteers brought HFNCs and oxygen concentrators to Hospital Palau Penang hoping to reduce stress for medical workers. An adult requires 500 liters of oxygen on a daily basis. Since our cells within our body rely on oxygen, oxygen is a very precious resource to COVID confirmed patients with severe symptoms. These people have very bad lung infection. So because of the bad infection, they are not able to absorb oxygen from the atmosphere. A person does not have enough oxygen. First of all, you will feel very tired. 
sometimes mentally the thinking might be very slow because there's not enough oxygen to the brain. Slowly, it will affect the brain and patients can become brain dead. Another thing that it will affect is the lungs, it will affect the heart and also the kidneys as well if there's not enough oxygen delivery. In Penang, COVID confirmed cases have been at the 1,000 mark for two days straight. Facing the increase of COVID confirmed patients, Siji volunteers brought 25 oxygen concentrators and 8 HFNCs to Hospital Palu Penang. Those who are admitted to a hospital, actually they require oxygen therapy. So what we can do with this machine is to provide enough oxygen so that the patient will receive oxygen into their lungs. Thank you to Siji for contributing the oxygen concentrators and the high-flow nasal cannula units for Hospital Palu Penang. Really thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope these devices can allow COVID-confirmed patients to receive immediate medical care. I really respect frontline medical workers. Facing the battle against the virus, city volunteers and medical workers collaborated, combating the epidemic together. In Malaysia, Siji Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter assist the stroke-affected citizen, Tan Ahai, to receive vaccination. HEMA members made numerous visits to check on his body condition. Here's more. When you are back home, immediately eat medicine. He has a lowering blood pressure. If it's high, he can't even talk. Under the company of his wife and volunteers, Tan An Hai received the vaccination. However, his blood pressure has been unstable. Therefore, volunteers continue to bring care to him. After three days, we went to his home and checked his condition. We are making sure if his conditions or his blood pressure is stable or not after the vaccination. Around January 5th this year, I felt heaviness in my legs. Later on, I went to Tongxing Hospital to check. The doctor told me that I have a stroke due to high cholesterol. Therefore, I have to be hospitalized. As the head of the family, Tan An Hai experienced movement difficulties as he also lost his job. The family of three now relies on savings to get through the day. You can eat multiple meals with less quantity. Though it's not just rice, it still contains a lot of sugar. You must not consume a lot of it. It's best to eat half a bowl, wait for two to three hours, and eat again once you are hungry. Tima volunteers, besides helping out with health checks, they have also reminded Tan An Hai to eat more healthily. You have to make an appointment again because your appointment expired. We will try to register a new appointment for you so you don't have to make the trip again. As Tima volunteers are here to safeguard Tan An Hai's well being, it is hoped that he may recover soon. In the Philippines, Siji volunteers have distributed rice, food, seasonings, and face shields to families in need on Bohol Island. A total of 5,000 people were helped. Volunteers also conducted home visits in different routes before the distribution to learn about the residents' living conditions. Thanks to Tsiji's help, Carmelita Carbon received 20 kilograms of rice and various seasonings used in kitchen. On the way home, she brought vegetables and was going home to cook a meal for the children. I encourage everyone in my family to practice eating vegetarian food. These food not only provide nutrition for us, but also help us avoid some uncertain diseases. Eating vegetables can benefit our health. People in our family really love to eat vegetables, and aside from being nutritious, it is also budget-friendly. I'm so thankful to the City Foundation, for I'm one of the chosen beneficiaries in our Banrange. Tsiji distributes supplies on Boho Island, taking into account of pandemic regulations and carry out in different sections, helping 5,000 people in total. Before the distribution, the volunteers first plan multiple routes to conduct home visits on different days to understand the current situation of the people. I'm a plain housewife and my husband is a fisherman. I'm very thankful to the Foundation for giving us the relief. 
This has great help to our daily consumption since now we're only depending on sea weather and our income is not enough for our expenses. Thank you so much. Max and face shores are necessary equipment for the people seen at the distribution site for more than a year. In addition to reflection and blessings, this great education given to people by the pandemic also saw that the better they know how to help each other. At Daling Tsuji Hospital, the medical team has set up dedicated wards for COVID-19 patients. Since some patients lost their appetite due to taking medications, thus volunteers prepare tasty food to improve their appetite. Volunteers peel the fruit and cut them up before placing them into a bowl. Today, they've also prepared braised white gourd and mushrooms to warm people's stomachs in the dedicated wards. Uh, Besides the patients, our nurses also need to eat fruit. So every day we'll prepare some fruit, peel them and slice them up. If they do not need to be peeled and sliced, we'll wash them and also prepare some snacks. The fruit and snacks are delivered at 10.30 on a cart. The nurses will divide them and give them to the patients to improve their appetite. We feel very warm as we are not in forgotten corner. After all, we work in the dedicated world and people are afraid of us. And teas are very passionate and they deliver all kinds of fruits and cookies so we won't get hungry. For the patients, this food comforts them. We're very happy to hear that the patient's appetite has improved and their conditions have stabilized. The most touching thing is that they're guarding the medical staff in the dedicated ward. The volunteers' kind gestures have warmed up the hearts of patients and medical staff. Chang Rui Kun, a physician from the Family Medicine Department of Daling Ziji Hospital, has participated in Yunling Team a Team for many years. Due to the pandemic, House calls were suspended for three months, but after level alert downgraded, the father and son pair set out to help more people in need. After three months, team members in Yunlin resumed the house call service. Dr. Jiang Ruiquan, who has been involved for many years, also took his son studying in the second year of pharmacy to volunteer. During this time, in accordance with the government regulations, we couldn't conduct house calls. Now we are here. I feel that some family members or patients seem to be expecting us to come. It's good to care about them more, no matter to the people providing care or the family members of the patients. The father and son pair contribute together to provide medical assistance. They also learn to count one's own blessings while seeing people's sufferings. I am pleased to be able to learn together. I came across a car accident survivor and patients with depression symptoms. I've learned to cherish what I have now. Long time low see, each patient was very happy when they saw team members again. We used to come every month, but now seeing they're well, we also feel relieved. Amidst the pandemic, team members continue to safeguard the health of remote villagers with love and care. On May 19, 2021, the Central Epidemic Command Center announced that all of Taiwan has entered a level 3 COVID alert. As the only medical center in the Hualien Taichung area, Hualien Ziji Medical Center, dedicated wards were immediately established to care for COVID patients. After May 22nd, when the first COVID case appeared, an infection within a family in our community occurred. <laughs> As the only medical center in Hualien Taidong area, Hualien Ziji Medical Center showed it was ready for the pandemic. At the beginning, when there were cluster infections in Hualien amongst the elderly people, there was a lot of tension. Then when these elderly people became severely ill and came in, there was actually no time to think about feelings. There are many things that need to be dealt with as soon as possible. In addition to taking care of patients, there are many processes that needed to be planned. There are still some actual drills and actual occurrences which require small adjustments.
。演练跟实际发生的时候，还是会有一些小小的要调整的。The emergency room of the hospital is the first line of defense. The pressure on nurses cannot be underestimated. And though everyone is worried about transmitting the disease, they still have to stick to their role. We found that many of our colleagues are very cute. After one round of questioning, we were asked a second round. Only after we asked them about lifestyle, we determined that they may not be high risk, and then we、we'll、let them come to the emergency room and do this work. In a case of medical treatment, as long as there's little chance of COVID infection, we use the highest level of treatment, which means they'll be treated as suspected confirmed COVID case and let them go for a check. These are the actions we take. Because we're the first line of defense and the first person to contact them, we don't even know whether or not they are a COVID case. I'm the first one judging them if they need to go into the clinic or the isolation area. This is a big source of pressure. As we are afraid of many oversight at my level, which could cause subsequent outbreaks or group infections. The first COVID case that Hualien Zhiji Medical Center handled was an 80-year-old grandfather who had a fever of 38.3 degrees on May 24th. He was quickly screened for COVID, was diagnosed as a mild case on May 25th. Gradually, his case became severe. Grandpa was also in home isolation when his fever started. After being sent to the hospital, he was diagnosed as a COVID patient who was in the ICU at the beginning and transferred on the 30th. When he arrived in a mild COVID world, he was taken care of by us. He was actually stable and ready to be discharged. It was just because this grandfather had three children that were diagnosed with the same COVID illness, so he was hospitalized and isolated at home. We were worried that no one could take care of him after he returned home. So after discussing with the medical department, we decided to let him stay in the hospital for another seven days, much like a quarantine hotel or home isolation. Oh yeah, yeah, 好，来转过来。有有有有有反应。哦。Oh yeah, yeah, 好。我是院长林心荣，恭喜你，一天比一天好。On the eve of the Dragon Boat Festival, Superintendent Lin Xinzong brought blessings from the Jingsa Abode to this grandfather's ward. A colleague happened to be in Grandpa's ward, and we used video conference so that the superintendent could talk to Grandpa. He said, "Grandpa," and the elderly man looked at the camera and felt great. <laughs> I'm very grateful to our colleagues. They really guarded this hospital well and did a very good job. <laughs> Forest in Taiwan is a precious resource. At the dry season this year, forest fires happen more frequently. As of July 3rd, 73 forest fires were reported, though most of these cases are caused by humans. This includes their acts of throwing cigarettes, burning joss money, setting off fireworks, and burning grass. In this report, let's learn how to prevent such a disaster. We're now at the forest fire scene. The fire happened on March 18th, burning down entire forests, as we can only see burned bamboos and silver grass. These plants are natural fuel of a forest fire. Because at the forest here, the area is mostly bamboo and grass, basically dry plants. If there are sparks or smoke around the area, once we discover it, we will immediately begin our mission. This time, the forest fire burned down 71 hectares. Fuel, oxygen, and thermal energy. Once these three conditions meet, forest fires occur. When we look at the bamboo, it has a lot of underground stem branching out in the dirt. After temperatures rise in the daytime, some of the fire that was put out earlier can ignite again. When bamboo meets high heat. The bamboo branch will crack and jump onto another place, relocating the fire spark. Another thing is the underground stem, because it expands underground. It has a smoldering effect when there is a forest fire. 
peak of forest fire cases span from October to April each year. This is due to a lack of rainfall and a dry forest, though most of the reported forest fires are caused by humans. In March of this year, the forest fire burned along the roads here, reaching to the Taiwan Provincial Highway No. 18. Though the climate is dry in Ali San Mountain, but the fire started near the roads caused by man-made reasons. In Taiwan, forest fires are caused by man-made reasons, up to 98 percent. This includes burning in fields or burning in private lands, leading the fire to national forests. There are also reasons such as throwing cigarettes, burning Joss money, and malicious attempts to set fire. After the forest fire, the land lacks vegetation which could cause rockfall. Therefore, a construction was held at Taiwan Provincial Highway No. 18. The roads there are closed on a regular basis since it plays a major role in preventing forest fires. The fire break starts at the borders of the Taiwan Provincial Highway No. 18. With this construction in place, it is hoped that the fire can be suppressed under the highway, protecting the highway and nearby forest. Roads and land without vegetation form a protective fire break as it aims to stop the fire from burning and spreading, though sometimes a fire break might not be able to stop a fire. There will be branches that will crack and bounce into other places, causing another fire at another location. The new spark, if connected with the original fire field, will spread the fire further. If the branches ignite more areas in the fire field, along with the dry climate and natural fields such as grass, this creates the worst situation. Though mankind cannot control rainfall, we can still plant certain tree types to prevent forest fires. This afforestation area started in 2015. We planted Zalkova, Formosana, Quercus Glauca, Taiwan Acacia, these trees are excellent preventing fire because we have a rough environment here with multiple slopes. Therefore, we selected these tree types for planting. In the past, because there were multiple forest fires, in 2015, when the Forestry Bureau started at forest station, they made changes to the trees type, planting trees that aren't easily flammable. This is the Taiwan Acacia. It was also affected due to forest fires this time. Fire-resistant trees aren't exactly immune to fire. It slows down the burn time, providing a buffer for firefighters to arrive. These trees will get burnt, but it won't kill the tree. Some trees like pine, it has a thicker bark. The fire continued to burn, burning down forest areas in Ali Shan National Scenic Area. After two months, green shoots emerge from ground. The forest fires are caused naturally, but in Taiwan, man-made forest fires amount to more cases. Forest fires are preventable, therefore we must know how to prevent it. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.